Hi, welcome to an edition of Legislative Report. I'm Linda Schlegel-Culver, your state representative, and here with me today is Matt Beck, Assistant Plans Engineer uh, with PennDOT Maintenance District 3. Uh, you'll notice behind us is a map of the Central Susquehanna Valley Thruway Project, uh, and today that's our big segment. Uh, we're gonna break this down into three segments so that you can understand the project, um, how it originated, um, and where we're going with the project. Uh, anybody who's lived in the central Susquehanna Valley knows uh, that the thruway stopped in around the year 1969 uh, when iced tea monies um, dried up from the federal government. And after over 40 plus years, uh, we managed to um, revive the project. And if anybody drives on Route 15 or 147, you can see the project sprouting up um, across the river, uh, earthwork moving. And Matt's going to talk to us about the origins of the project. All right, thanks. Uh the Central Susquehanna Valley Transportation Project, or CSVT as it's commonly referred to, um, is one of the most complex projects that we've ever had on the transportation network in the central part of the state. Uh, like you said, it's also a project with a long history, mostly due to, to funding constraints over the years that have made it unknown when or if the project would ever be built. Uh, the project as we know it today really started in the mid-1990s when we uh, reinitiated studies for a, a bypass through uh, the central Susquehanna Valley uh, in the area where the north and west branch of the Susquehanna River come together. Uh, th those studies had you know, been planned long ago or, or started long ago. Uh, because of those funding constraints, uh, the project was never carried through. And as a result, there was a, a missing link in the Route 15 corridor in that part of the central Susquehanna Valley. Uh, so when we reinitiated those studies in mid the mid-1990s, uh, we started with a needs analysis to determine exactly what goals the project should achieve. Uh, through several years of design work and environmental investigations, we ultimately received environmental clearance for the project in 2003 uh, when the final environmental impact statement was approved. From that point, design work continued for the next few years until we again reached a point where funding levels across the state weren't keeping up with our transportation needs uh, and ultimately the project was placed on hold in 2008. Uh, from that point there wasn't much change in the status of the project over the next few years until ultimately in late 2013 uh, the situation changed when Pennsylvania passed Act 89. And that uh, comprehensive transportation funding plan was the major breakthrough funding wise that this project needed uh, to let us have a good plan in place to advance it to completion. Uh, since, or, or following that uh, act being passed in late 2013, uh, we got back to design work, right-of-way acquisition, utility relocation, and ultimately that led to uh, construction starting, so reaching that major milestone of breaking ground in January of 2016. Um, I guess just to explain the, the purpose of the project a little bit, uh, the, the project is planned to achieve three goals. It is first meant to uh, reduce congestion and accommodate growth throughout the project area. So the traffic congestion that we see in areas like Northumberland on Route 147 and on Routes 11 and 15 in Shemokin Dam will be alleviated by this new four-lane highway. Uh, the project's also meant to improve safety uh, most of the major routes in the project area, like Route 147, Route 15, Route 11, uh, they all have greater than average rates of crashes in general and fatal crashes. Uh, so the, the project's meant to reduce those crashes throughout the central Susquehanna Valley. And ultimately it's meant to do both of those things by separating trucks and through traffic from local traffic. Uh, from those early studies that we had done in the, the mid-1990s, we found that there's a high percentage of vehicles, particularly trucks, that are just passing through the area and therefore expect to be able to, uh, to move faster and, and in an un unrestricted flow of traffic. Uh, and therefore those uh, through vehicles and trucks conflict with the, the local traffic that are trying to access the residential areas and commercial areas Can throughout the project. Can you tell us like, how much traffic is moving, the volume that's moving through the area? Uh, sure, as, as an example on routes 11 and 15 uh, through Shemokin Dam, we see about 40 to 50,000 cars a day on that route in particular. 
Uh, when we factor in that growth that I talked about that the project's supposed to accommodate, we expect that by 2044, those traffic volumes could grow up to around 100,000 vehicles a day. Uh, so with congestion already uh, in that area, you know, there'd be even greater gridlock when, when we see that growth over the next uh, 20 to 30 years. Having funding in place as of late 2013, as I said, we were able to, uh, to reactivate design, right-of-way acquisition and utility relocation, ultimately break ground on the northern section in early 2016. Uh, probably the next thing to, to explain is the two sections of the project, which we can see on the map here. Uh, I guess as, as an overview overall, the project is me meant to connect Route 147 uh, just south of Montandon across the West Branch Susquehanna River, connecting to Route 15 just south of Winfield, uh, then around Shemokin Dam, ultimately tying into Routes 11 and 15 just north of Sealands Grove. Uh, for design and construction purposes, the project's broken up into the, the northern and southern sections. Uh, to, to look at the southern section in a little bit more detail, shown here in orange. Uh, the southern section starts at that existing routes 11 and 15 interchange just north of Sealands Grove in Snyder County, runs through Monroe Township, passes through the west side of Shemokin Dam Borough, and then ultimately connects to Route 15 at a new interchange uh, just south of Winfield in Union County, Union Township. The southern section also includes a connector roadway and an interchange that will provide access through Shemokin Dam Borough to Route 61, uh, providing access to existing Routes 11 and 15 and Route 61 into Sunbury. Uh, then the northern section starts at that new interchange on Route 15, just below Winfield, runs across the West Branch Susquehanna River into Point Township, Northumberland County, uh, where there will be a new interchange providing access to Route 147 uh, via Ridge Road. From there, the new highway runs north into West Chillisquaukee Township and ultimately connects to Route 147 where that highway uh, currently goes from two lanes to four lanes. Uh, overall, those two sections add up to about 13 miles of new four lane limited access highway. Uh, they involve four interchanges and they also involve 22 highway structures. So uh, it's, again, certainly one of the biggest projects that we've had in the, the central part of the state in, in PennDOT District 3. Uh, it's also one of the most expensive. When we, when we look at the cost of all of that work, the total cost of the project is estimated at 670 million. That includes uh, design, right-of-way acquisition, utility relocations, and construction. Uh, and so the project that can, or the, the portion of the project that construction started with uh, in early 2016 is the northern section. Uh, specifically, that construction started on the, the new bridge over the West Branch Susquehanna River. Uh, we've set up a, a specific construction contract for that portion of the project to build the new bridge over the, the West Branch Susquehanna River, uh, as well as uh, minimal amounts of, of approach roadway on both sides of that. Uh, the more detailed map shows the northern section. Uh, again, as I said, connecting from Route 147 in West Chillisquaukee Township uh, into Point Township to that new interchange to provide access to existing Route 147 via Ridge Road. Across the West Branch Susquehanna River uh, and ultimately connecting to the new interchange with Route 15 in Union Township, Union County, just below Winfield. Uh, so again, construction started with uh, the construction of the new bridge over the West Branch Susquehanna River. I think that'll be the, the first stop on your, your uh, visit to the field to see some of that work. Uh, about a year after that work started, we then got work underway under a separate contract uh, for all the work, all the earthwork and smaller structures on the north side of the river. Uh, that's our, our second construction contract for the northern section. Uh, about six months later in early 2017, we awarded the third contract for the northern section, 
which is for the work on the northern section on the south side of the river, basically to build that new interchange with Route 15 just below Winfield. And looking ahead, the, we have a fourth and final construction contract planned for the northern section, and that'll be for paving of the new highway after all the earthwork and, and bridges are built. Uh, we're wrapping up final design of that fourth and final contract, and we expect that uh, we'll open bids for that this fall, in the fall of 2018, uh, then with some paving of the new highway to start as early as next year. Uh, overall, the plan is to, our plan is to open the, the northern section of the project to traffic by itself. Uh, as we'll talk about in a, a few minutes, we aren't quite as far along on the southern section of the project. Uh, so the, the northern section will be open to traffic by itself. Uh, based on our progress to date, we anticipate having that open to traffic in about 2022. That will make the traveling public very happy. Right, that's the point when uh, the public will start to see benefits of the project realized, like reduced congestion, uh, particularly in areas like Northumberland and Lewisburg, uh, improved safety on those routes as the, the through traffic is, is now using part of the new four-lane limited access highway. I know we've talked a lot about the northern section because it's the first part of this project um, and it's visible to the public now. I mean, I think the naysayers who say this project is never going to happen um, have pretty much stopped. Um, but we still have the southern section of the project. Can you tell us what's going on with that and what people can expect? Sure. And as, as I mentioned, we aren't as far along on uh, the final design of the southern section because of those funding constraints over the years. Final design of that par portion didn't get started as early as it as it had on the northern section. Uh, at this point, we're in the final design phase. We are working through some uh, fairly some substantial engineering challenges that we identified a little over a year ago. Uh, last year in 2017, we held a series of public meetings related to, to modifying a portion of the alignment for the southern section. Uh, we've, through, those, through that coordination and further study on the southern section, we have recommended an alternate route for, for about a two mile portion of that southern section, specifically to avoid the ash basins in the Shemokin Dam area. Uh, we're currently working on our environmental clearance that's required for that portion of the project. Uh, and ultimately we anticipate this summer being able to provide a, an updated schedule for construction of that section. Thank you, Matt, for your time today and for sharing your expertise on the project. Um, we will revisit the southern section of the project uh, as it moves forward. And just want to stress how important the public input was uh, to the project and to the department uh, when making all of these decisions. So thank you for your time today. Um, we're going to be leaving here and heading out to the bridge. It'll be quite a spectacular view, so we look forward to seeing you and stay tuned. I'm here with Jeremiah Gonzalo with PennDOT, and we are on the, is it the southern section of the uh, Central Susquehanna Valley Thruway River Bridge. This is probably the most talked about part of this project so far. Uh, and Jeremiah, this is what you're in charge of here. Yes, I'm project manager for River Bridge, uh, along with Dave Sarah. And um, I can just give you a quick outline of, sure. of the project. Um, so what you're looking at behind us is uh, river bridge construction. Um, so we're essentially on the CSVT uh, main line, and this would be traveling north across the uh, west branch of the Susquehanna. Um, we're currently working on nine of the 14 river piers. Eight of the piers are on land, and six of the piers are in water. Um, the bridge, are, the construction started in 2015, uh, and, and this is where we're at, at currently. You've made a lot of progress over the last couple of years. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, we're roughly approaching 50%. Um, we have the foundations or footers built uh, for eight out of the 14 uh, piers. And as you could see, we have eight of the piers uh, in different phases of the construction, all the way up to the the uh, steel girders that you could see on piers four and five. So can you tell us how long the bridge is, how high the bridge is? So, so that's, a, that's a question we get a lot. And the uh, bridge is 4,545 feet long from one end to the other. And the, the bridge height at our highest pier is pier two. So second one in from the shot here. Um, and that is 187 feet uh, measured from the bottom of the foundation all the way up to where the, where the bridge beams sit. 
And if you compare that to uh, bridges in Pennsylvania, uh, there's roughly 25,000 bridges in Pennsylvania. And that is within the uh, top 10, definitely, but approaching the top five uh, for height measurement. In Pennsylvania? In Pennsylvania, yes, that's correct. So, Do you know nationally how that rates? Uh, I, don't know, I don't know nationally, but, but I would say definitely in probably top 50. Okay, yep. highest yep. bridges. Highest, highest structures, yes. And could you address maybe why the bridge is so high in this specific, specific area? The bridge has to be this high to match the earthwork on this side. Um, and, and the environmental and right-of-way impacts was, was all taken into account and this was the best fit that, that many engineers came up with, and uh, that's what you're seeing here. So we, one thing we have to worry about in the central Susquehanna Valley is flooding. This bridge will never ha be flooded, is that correct? No, no, this bridge is extremely high, and it doesn't, there's no effects for backwater, as you see some, some of the bridges in northeast PA that, that uh, get clogged with, with uh, debris and um, flooding is affected to the housing upstream, uh, this bridge will definitely not, not have that effect. And how many workers do we have on site? I know we can see some of them from here. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good question. So, so uh, every day it varies depending on weather and how their schedule um, uh, translates to how many workers are here. But I would say roughly about 50, 50 to 60 guys. Um, the department has uh, about 12 to 14 uh, full-time inspectors. And then Trumbull is the prime contractor. Uh, they have engineers, uh, superintendents, they have carpenters and laborers. And then there's, there's subcontractors, um, uh, the concrete concrete truck guys, uh, deliverers, and uh, some of the other, then they, would, they have the uh, steel erectors from, from Pittsburgh Century Steel, and uh, LB Construction are the guys tying the steel reinforcement. So how do the guys actually get up to that top of that pier? Uh, well, I don't, if you can see in the background, uh, there is a man lift that goes up and they control it from a little basket and go all the way up. Or uh, another option is a, they call it a man basket. Uh, it's a small square piece of steel that the guys get in and then the crane picks them up all the way to the top of the, the bridge. Um, this, an interesting fact, uh, just off, off topic here, but uh, this bridge is essentially a normal, could be thought of a normal bridge that you see driving around. Um, it's just a lot bigger. So being that it's a, the size of it, a lot of more challenges, uh, engineering challenges and construction challenges uh, during, its, during its, its time of construction. Um, some quick statistics about the bridge. Uh, each one of our footing or foundations has uh, roughly 150,000 pounds of steel reinforcement and about 1,000 yards of concrete. So that's 100 yards, I mean 100 trucks of concrete just for one footer that you don't, you don't see. Um, and there, there's, about, so about the steel, there's roughly 50,000 uh, pounds of steel on the bridge. Uh, 24,000 pounds of that is uh, for the steel girders that we're starting to erect uh, behind us, you can see. Um, a little bit about our schedule. Uh, the, this summer we will be transitioning the causeway to the other side, so uh, boaters are to beware. We will have all of our, our proper signage out there. Um, and then once we, we flip the causeway, the rock to the other side of the river, we'll start constructing those, those piers over there, uh, 9, 10, and 11 are in the river. Um, and then the steel erectors will drop back and erect the steel beams from abutment one, which you could see here, all the way. Uh, across. So for boaters, because this is always a big question, uh, they will not be disrupted during the week of July 4th, if I understand that no. correctly. No. And how long will it take to move the causeway to one side uh, of the They will be together? working 24 hours, uh, most likely six or seven days a week, um, roughly about two weeks it'll take. To move it over. To move it over to the other side, yep. But, but they'll still be able to vote, vote, Absolutely. vote on July 4th. Absolutely, Great. yep, yep. Okay. So before we close here today, is there anything else you want us to know about um, this bridge project? Um, no, it, except that this is really the uh, this is really the gem of the whole CSVT River Bridge. I mean, of the whole CSVT project, and uh, it's it's hard to believe that from the start of basically a farmer's field, that then within two years or so, um, you're going to see a lot of traffic uh, flowing across here, and it'll definitely reshape the area. How does it feel, feel to be a part of Pennsylvania's history? Uh, really great. <laughs> 
Um, I know this is probably the most talked about part of the project. Uh, you're, like, you're right when you call it the gem, but it is. This is a historical moment in the Valley and in Pennsylvania. Yes. So thank you for all your work on this. I appreciate it. I'm here with Jeremiah, Jeremiah Gonzalo at the River Bridge. I'm here with Dave Wise at the Northern Earthworks section of the Central Susquehanna Valley Thruway. And we are technically standing right now and what would be the median, uh, the grassy area between the north and southbound lanes in the future. Um, so Dave, do we want to talk about at this section uh, how much earthwork was actually moved? Um, it does look dramatically different than it did um, in its original state. Yeah, pe people say we change the landscape and we really do. Um, like Matt said earlier, this project started with the river bridge, then the second contract was the earthwork on the eastern side of the river. Um, Trumbull Corporation did that. There was two and a half million yards of earthwork. Um, can you equate that for people? Like, it sounds like a lot, but... It, it is a lot. You, you can see the what looks like the mountain here behind us. That was all one solid mountain, and we blasted and cut through all of that material, hauled it to uh, different valleys on the project as, as part of the you know two and a half miles of uh, new highway on this sec section of the road. So did you use all of the earthwork that you moved? Yeah, th this earthwork was, um, we had enough earthwork here to build all the fills, and we actually had a little bit extra, so we had some waste areas on the project as well. So when we talk about the blasting, I know a lot of blasting took place that nobody has any idea um, that there was blasting. Can you tell us how much blasting took place, maybe the time of day that it typically took place? Yeah. Definitely. Uh, the, all the earthwork on this job had to be blasted just in order to dig it. The rock was sufficiently hard enough that they couldn't get through it with just digging or ripping. So the contractor blasted all the material. Everything was done during daylight. There was no blasting at night. Um, tried to keep everything consistent time of day. Um, part of the, the job, there was a potential for acid rock on the project. So this was one of the cuts where there was a potential. The contractor did a sampling program. Uh, before we ever started blasting or moving any earthwork at all, we, we drilled and sampled through the entire cut, had it all tested in an independent lab to make sure there was no acid rock. And then we had an on-site geologist every day that we moved earthwork on site, watching the material just to make sure that there was, there was no acid rock. And then we had periodic tests during construction also, just to, to verify that there was no acid rock. So there. we were very fortunate on this part of the project not to have any acid rock. That, that's correct, yeah. So how, when you do find acid rock, how does it change the scope of the project? This project we had predetermined encapsulation areas. So if we did find any, we had spots that we knew that we could put it and we would just line it with clay. Um, the way that it works is as long as it's encapsulated and the water and air can't get to it, it doesn't pre present an environmental problem. And if you get into a situation where somebody would expose it to the air, what actually happens? Then it could turn to acid and run off and contaminate some, some streams. So we were very fortunate so, then. We were. Um, we still have some precautions that we've done just in case. The, the ditches in this area will be lined with um, a waterproof material. So if there was anything on the face of the cut that could turn to acid, it's going to be kept from going down into the earth and it'll get put down into a basin where it can be treated if in the future anything does develop. So when do you anticipate the public being able to see the lanes that are going to be going in here? B because we're offline here, you know, 147, uh, it's just over the hill from us, but you can't see up here. So for the next several years, contractors will be up here working off, off site so people won't see the, the progress. Um, it'll be 2022 is the anticipated date when traffic will actually be running on here. And we discourage, just I want to be clear, from the public just coming up to see it um, because of safety issues. Correct. Yeah, there's there's different things. Um, you know, we've had people on four wheelers and, you know, on weekends, reports of people hiking through, but it's definitely not safe. Uh, you know, there's we try to keep everything as safe as we can, but um, for somebody who's not familiar with the project to be out here, it's just not safe for them. Too. Dave, we're going to leave this area and head down to the Ridge Road uh, interchange. You want to talk about that a little bit before we head down there? Sure. Uh, where we're at here, we're up on the hill. All this material behind us was excavated and hauled down to Ridge Road. Um, when we get down there, you'll see how much higher we are than the old Ridge Road. Um, we put 
almost a million yards of this embankment, hauled it down there and filled over top of the old road. So the new highway is much higher than the old Ridge Road. Um, you'll see where the old Ridge Road had a cul-de-sac where we dead ended it and filled over top of it. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the drainage areas in that section? Sure, yeah. One of the things you'll notice when we get down there the, um, is some ponds that look like they're full of muddy water, and that's because of the rain that we just had. Right. So uh, right now everything, you know, it's not final stabilized, so we have, we have sediment basins, so the runoff's all kept in those basins so it can settle out before it runs off into the stream and does any pollution. And that's a pretty scientific um, process as to how many basins you have and how the water's collected? Very scientific, yeah. DEP really regulates the watershed areas and they calculate right down to the tenth of an acre, you know, where the water has to be treated and then discharged. Okay. Thank you. We look forward to going down to the interchange. So Dave, do we want to talk about how the interchange is going to work um, and anything else you want to tell us about this interchange? Sure. Well, like, like we had said earlier, this project is transitioned from an earth moving project to a bridge building project. Um, where we stand right now is at the future Ridge Road interchange. Um, the, the road here you can see behind us and the bridge will be carrying Route 15 over top of the new relocated Ridge Road, which is where we're standing. Um, this project right now, this summer, we're finishing up on the bridge building. Uh, we're currently working on these two bridges at Ridge Road, a uh, bridge at Wooded Run, and a bridge at Chillisquaki. Um, on the other side of the river, we're working on three bridge locations on the New Enterprise section, and uh, Jeremiah's working on the river bridge with, with Dave Sarah. So there's lots of bridge work going on this summer. Uh, the earthworks mainly finished on both sides, just some final touch-up work. Um, where we're standing here at the future Ridge Road interchange, this is going to be where people from Northumberland are going to access on, you know, the western or the eastern side of the river. Uh, they'll be able to get on a full interchange here to go north and south on the new highway. It's been difficult for people to picture what's actually happening, and I think I've commented. I can't remember what it did look like in here. Um, how many bridges are going to be in the northern section of the project be built as part of that project? Everybody talks about the bridge, which is the river bridge, because it's such, such a, a big, long bridge, but there's 12 other bridges on the northern section to be built as well. Um, anything you want people to know when they're accessing this or how many cars will be moving on the new uh, bypass? There, the bypass is going to take a majority of the traffic, but the new Ridge Road, they're anticipating a, a lot of traffic, so this will be a full interchange here with actually two, two turn lanes to head north. They're anticipating that much volume of traffic. I know we've talked about in the future of Ridge Road, sort of watching and seeing what happens after the project's complete and addressing the issues as we go along. That's, that's correct. The, a lot of the, the guess is, you know, what traffic's going to do until, until they get the roads built, you really don't know. So one of the most important questions that we continually get asked, uh, when can people actually drive on this new portion of the highway? Uh, the contracts we're currently doing right now are the earthwork and the structures. They'll be finished. This year in the fall, we'll be letting the paving contract. And that contract is expected to be done in 2022, so people will be using the new highway at that point. So we're anticipating 2022, um, and I know people will be excited if you can open it up sooner, but I guess that remains to be seen. Right. If, if possible, we will, definitely. Dave, thank you so much for taking time to explain this to us. Uh, we probably will be back to you before this project's over because it's an ongoing, long project, but we appreciate your um, expertise on the project and explaining it to us. Um, this is our legislative report on the Central Susquehanna Valley Thruway. If anybody has questions, you can go to csvt.com or we'll also be displaying uh, where you can make phone calls if you have questions or concerns. Thank you for watching Legislative Report.